Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. Now we're back. Like I told you guys, we're going to be doing a series. I'm going to try the best I can to do it every other day, um, even though I get a bit uh, wrapped up with work. But anyways, talking about paranormal stuff, right? Just so you guys are aware and stay tuned. I'm going to be doing a session at the cemetery with the spirit box. It's something that I have been getting a lot of requests from people that follow me on Instagram. So you guys definitely stay tuned for that. All right. So let's begin where the very beginning, right? Where it all started. This is a question that I get asked all the time and it is pinky. How did you know that you were born with certain gifts? Um, the aha moment, I think, is what people mean for that or by that. Um, so it started many, many, many years ago when yours truly was about six or seven years old. Um, prior to that, keep in mind, prior to that, um, my dad and my mom would always speak or even my grandmother would speak about me, them seeing me talking you know, with imaginary friends and um, playing and they just didn't really think much of it. They just thought, you know, it's another, you know, kid playing with imaginary friends. Come to find out many years later that it wasn't really some weren't imaginary. There were actually two spirits that would follow me, uh, a girl and a boy. And they were about my age back then. So we're talking about between the ages of four to six years old. Um, but that aha moment happened for me when I was about seven years old, I want to say, uh, we had moved into a house, um, with my parents. Um, and this was many, many years ago. Um, that was the moment that really changed everything for me because at that age, at such a young age, it triggered something, um, it was kind of like accepting what I had already known, except because when you're a kid, you're so innocent, you right? There's, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of like discerning of that's possible and that's not possible, if that makes sense to you guys. Uh, but it was in this moment when I was about six-ish or seven, I want to say seven, um, so let me paint the picture for you guys. I lived in a neighborhood where across the street from my house lived my best friend, which is a, a girl which happened to have the same name as me, Jessica. She lived right across the street from my house and we were the best as of friends. We would be in obviously elementary and we would play together, but we would also have play dates where she would come and visit me or I would go and visit her at her house and we would play. So it was nothing unusual. Every weekend when we didn't have school, we would wake up super early. Either she would come to my house or I would go to her house. We would watch cartoons and then we would play. So this was a random, normal, everyday Saturday for me. And what happened was that she was, we had agreed that she would come over early in the morning. Now, for you guys to understand, um, back then, my dad and my mom had tons of friends that would come in and out of the house all the time. Like my house was never alone. It was never lonely. It was always, people were always coming in and out. Um, my dad would sell cars on the side, aside from the businesses that he had. Um, so people would come over, they would see the cars. Sometimes it was friends, sometimes it was relatives. So they would bring their whole families, et cetera. So people were always coming in and out that day. It was early in the morning. I want to say around eight 30 ish. And it was a normal Saturday, right? So I wake up, I phone my friend and I'm like, Hey, are you coming over? She's like, yes, I'll be there in a bit. So at that time, I would hear my mom because it was a two-story house. So I would hear my mom downstairs in the kitchen talking and, you know, cooking or whatever. So I didn't really think much of it. I was like, 
whatever, you know, um, she's over there with hosting or whatever. Right. So I was in my room and I was getting waiting for my friend actually to come over because we were supposed to hang out in my room. So she calls me. She's like, hey, Jess, I'm on my way. I was like, perfect. Come on in. The door is open. Uh, my mom's downstairs, you know, whatever. For some odd reason, she was taking a little bit longer than expected. So I was in my room and I was still in my PJs and I opened the door. Now where we lived, it was like my room was here and in front of my room was my sister's room, my oldest sister's room. And then right at the center between both rooms was the restroom. So I was used to people coming in and out, right? Because they would use the restroom. It was a two-story house. We had restrooms downstairs too, but sometimes they were busy, whatever. So that day I got up, I opened the, the door of my room so that my friend can come in and I go back to the bed and I was getting some notebooks that we were going to be drawing or coloring or whatever. And then I felt this breeze like it just called my attention. I look up and when I look up, I see this older lady. Now, this older lady was a bit short. She had short, curly hair and she was in a white bathrobe, in a white, um, you know, the older people's, you know, pajamas that they wear like back in the days. Um which I thought was odd because I was like, why is this lady in PJs? That was my first, you know, the first thing I thought. And she looked at me and we made eye contact and she smiled and then she went about going towards the restroom. So I didn't think much of it. I was, I just thought it was weird. I was like, mm, you know, what is this lady doing in my house in PJs? Again, keep in mind, my family would always have people over. So it wasn't like an odd thing, you know, to see someone I didn't recognize. It wasn't like abnormal. We were just used to that. You know, my dad had a lot of businesses going and people would come in and out of our house all the time. What I did find odd was that the lady was wearing a pajamas. That That's kind of what caught my attention. I was like, that that was just weird and odd. So I didn't think much of it. I see her go into the restroom and then about two minutes I'm in my room and I'm thinking like, what is this lady doing with PJs? Whatever. So I go about, I'm getting my notebooks and I start turning the page and then I look up and she's staring right at me. She's standing, staring right at me. And she is like somewhat smirking or smiling. And when I tell you, I don't know what it was. Something just told me like, a look down to her feet. I look down and I see her feet not touching the ground. So this was odd to me. Now, keep in mind, like I said, in the past, I would physically see there is two specific spirits that would follow me very often and I would play with them. It was a girl and a boy, but they were my age. And though others would tell me, oh, yeah, I seen you talking to someone. Was it your friend? Was it your little friend? You know, adults thinking your imaginary friends or whatever. So I didn't like acknowledge the fact that they were dead or that they were roaming spirits. It, it was just something that I just it, it was normal to me. But when I seen this older lady and I see that her feet are not touching the ground, let me tell you guys, it freaked the shit out of me. Like it completely, like something took over me. I started feeling my heart beating really, really fast. Keep in mind, she's still standing there staring at me. I had no idea who this person was. I had no idea who or what it was, but the fact that they weren't, her feet weren't touching the ground is something that triggered my mind. And I don't know what it was that I immediately asked her, what are you doing here? And it was, like I said, understanding that I'm seven years old, you know, like it just, something just didn't feel right. And I told her, what are you doing here? She looked at me and she said, I just passed in Spanish. 
she said, I just passed. I'm your neighbor. And I need you to give a message in Spanish, right? The whole time she was speaking in Spanish. And she said, tell him to look under the bed. At that point, it it just didn't make sense to me. And I yelled. I freaked the shit. I yelled. And she looked at me and she just turned like if she was going to walk towards going towards the stairs. And I literally go out of my room to peek to see if she's like going down the stairs. And she is, except she's like, she's not touching the ground. So I'm yelling at the top of my lungs. And I don't know what the hell, like, I don't even know at this point where my mom was at the whole time. I was thinking she was downstairs because I can hear her and I can hear her like moving stuff around, like if she was cooking or whatever. And when I'm yelling, like no one's coming to me. So I had this habit where usually I would rush into my parents' room if I needed something or whatever, because I knew that my dad was always there. He was always sleeping during the day because he would work in the evening. So I rushed into his room and I jump on top of the bed and I'm like trying to talk to him and I just can't get the words out of my mouth. And my dad's like, hey, calm down. What's going on? Take a deep breath. Like what's going on? And I told him, I was like, dad, I just seen and I literally remember telling him, I just seen a fucking ghost. And my dad was like, what do you mean? And I'm like, I just seen an old lady and he's trying to, I think he was trying to ground me by asking me questions so that I can think of what just happened instead of thinking of the freaking out part. So he starts asking me, what is she wearing? How does she look? Was she, you know, welcoming and what was, did she made you feel uncomfortable or like your life was in danger and stuff like that. And as a kid, I'm trying to like process what just happened. So he's kind of like asking me all of these questions. I start telling him, no, I didn't feel like I was threatened, but it just freaked me out that I seen her foot, like her feet not touching the ground. And, and he was like, and what did she say? So then I start telling him and he's like, wait, she said that, that she's a neighbor. And I was like, yeah, like, that's weird. Cause up until that point, I had never seen this lady in my life. Now, keep in mind, the whole time since we moved in to that house, next door, there was this man that I found so interesting because he was so odd. And I just love weirdness. <laughs> he was extremely odd and extremely private. And I, let me not go into details about how he lived because we went into his house a few times. He became a friend of my dad, but anyways, it was just a whole nother thing. But next door to us lived another guy. Well, a man, he was around 35 ish back then. Um, but he would, we would always see him like outside in the porch and he would either be out there, like just relaxing, chilling or whatever, or he'll be chopping it off with my dad sometimes. Um, but I had no idea, like, I didn't know if it was like that lady lived in the house with the odd guy or with the other guy that was kind of weird because he lived by in, in that house and it was, you know, by himself and without knowing, right, the backstory, which we'll get to in a bit. But so it's just weird. So I'm telling my dad what's going on, da, 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 da. And then that same day, right, my friend comes over and I start telling her what happened. And she's like, what? Like, it couldn't, that's not possible. And I was like, I don't know. Like, so then when I, you know, later throughout the day, my dad starts talking to my mom about what happened or whatever. And my mom would always, sometimes I would come to her about stuff like that. Um, Like an example, when I was starting to talk to the little girl that would come to me, I kind of mentioned it a few times to my mom, but I feel like she brushed it off like it's her imaginary friend. Um, so when I'm telling her or when my dad's telling her what's going on and I'm like, yeah, I seen it. Like, you know, I, I promise you, like, this is what happened. And she's like, no, you're crazy. Like, stop, you know, stop seeing stuff like that. Like, don't sit there and try to talk to them. Like, that's not your business. Like, there's this big, no, no, right. In some, in our culture, anyways, like people that are not understanding of spirits and things like that. Um, 
They tell you not to meddle with them because then they start following you around. It's just as a form, I think, to protect you. But it, it's really the truth is it's that it's ignorance. That's what it is. But anyway, she was making this whole big thing like, no, you need to stop doing stuff like that. And I was like, I don't do it like I can't help it. Like so then my dad sat me down. He started talking to me and he started telling me, like, listen, I think that what you have is something that I had when I was a kid. At a very young age, um, you know, his life was very difficult and he would sometimes spend time with my great grandmother, which was his grandmother. And they lived in, or I should say she lived in this, um, I don't know what it's called, but like back in the days, it was like a sanctuary for nuns or something like that. So he would sometimes, you know, uh, live with her sometimes. And he started telling me that he would see spirits, that spirits would literally come and talk to him and that he would be so freaked out that he would tell my great grandmother, which by the way, my great grandmother was a powerful, a powerful house. Let me tell you, um, but she was about no bullshit, you know, like the moment she felt that my dad back then felt threatened or felt very uncomfortable or scared, she would literally like go out there where my dad would see them and like just talk shit to them and tell them like, get the hell out of the house, get out of here. You don't belong here. Leave him alone. Do not talk like she was not scared of anything. Let me tell you guys, she was not scared of anything, especially anything that has to do with paranormal. Um she respected it. She respected them. Um, but when it came to like her family or anyone from her family seeing or experiencing or feeling threatened, she was like a mama bear. Um, so that's what she did, you know, all the time. And my dad was a child. He was between the ages of like four all the way to seven. And he says that he would literally like, she never really sat him down and talked to him about spirits but it was something that he just, it was so scary for him. And I can totally relate because that day, you guys, it creeped the shit out of me. Um, I was scared. I feel like that was the moment where I realized that, yes, there are spirits and then there's human people and how to distinguish them. Um, which back then I, up until that point, I had like, my awareness was not like, this is a, you know, baby boy that's following me, or this is a baby girl that's following me. That's a spirit. Like to me, they were friends to me. It was like normal until it wasn't normal. You know what I mean? So long story, um, trying to make it as short as possible. I, my dad sat me down and he was talking to me and he was telling me like, listen, this is something that runs in the family. And as a kid, I wish I could have had someone to guide me to better sharpen those abilities. But instead I was a kid, I was terrified and I just wanted nothing to do with it. So as time progressed, I grew more scared and scared. And I just, one day, you know, I just little by little started like not tapping into that. And I was so petrified that I closed myself off. So now I don't experience that, but I'm telling you because I want you to sharpen those abilities. I want you to really tap into what you have. Um, and yes, of course, my mom was like, don't tell her that nonsense. Like, what's wrong with you? Uh, but yeah. So what happened was that after that happened, for some reason, my dad goes out there to smoke and he sees the neighbor and he starts talking to him and he starts telling him out of nowhere, like, yeah, you know, all this time I've been living here, but this is not really my house. I was basically what he was doing is he was getting paid to care for an elderly lady. And this lady had family, but they had all abandoned her. And so he was a caretaker for her. And she grew so fond of him that when she passed, or I should say before she passed, she changed her will. And in her will, she had left him um, the owner of that home, except he didn't know about it. So when she passed, I guess she was like she was homebound or bed bound, I should say. And the bed that she had was like the medical ones, like the ones that the hospitals provide. So she had left the will 
under that bed. And so when they're talking about it and he's like, yeah, like they're going to be coming, you know, over, they had already picked up her body, but they're going to be coming over like to pick up like the oxygen tanks and stuff like that. And obviously the bed. So my dad was like, wait, well, you know, something that was mentioned or I think he said that I had had a dream or something like that. So that probably, you know, so I wouldn't sound cuckoo um, to check under the bed. So I don't know if he did, if he didn't, I am assuming he did because he ended up becoming owner of that home. And that was the first time that, you know, I really became aware of spirits and the fact that I think me mentally back then, I think that it had a lot to do because I would only deal with the ones that were my age, which maybe in my brain, it was like acceptable or like realistic, whereas dealing or seeing an older person, like you feel a little bit more guarded, you know, you feel a little bit more thrown aback, especially again, like I said, the feet. That's something that I had never like paid attention to. And the crazy part is that after that happened twice, um, the little boy that would come to me came to me. And that was something that I looked at one time was in back of the house that um, I just seen him and I started talking to him and I told him, are you a spirit? And I looked down and his feet weren't touching the ground. And he said, yes. And then I asked him, why hadn't you told me, you know, that you're a spirit? And he said, because we're friends. Um, so his, his innocence, the energy of his innocence, I think that was never uh, obviously ma malevolent. It was never. Um, and it was almost as if he wasn't aware fully of what had happened to him because the more we talked about what happened to him, he started like remembering. And I know that sounds weird. You would think, right. But it was almost like it just happened and he just was stuck. Um, so when I told him like, you know, after the conversations that I had, cause I seen him twice after that, I told him, I think that you need to go to the light. You need to ascend. You can't, you can't be here because this is the land of the living. And it was almost like a conversation of a farewell, right? To a friend, because he was a friend of mine for a while, like almost two years. And it was, it made me sad, but it also made me feel like maybe I had something to do with the crossing. And it just, it was very endearing. And I think that from there on out, I was extremely pulled towards anything that was paranormal, anything that was spiritual or in the spiritual realm, you know, getting deeper into things like this. I started, you know, realizing a lot of connections, et cetera, that runs in the family, that runs in the bloodline. Obviously, my dad had it. Obviously, my great grandmother had it. Um, but yeah, that was my first experience. The first like aha moment that I was like, holy shit, this is freaky. Um, but yeah, I've experienced so many, like so many experiences, you guys, and that's not even talking about my profession. That's not even talk going into cleansings and stuff like that, which you guys can expect videos coming, but for now, I hope that you guys enjoyed. I hope it was a little bit entertaining for you guys and definitely stay tuned because we have, um, a few workings. Uh, one is going to be the spirit box in the cemetery. Second would be uh, trying to connect with a few uh, famous people that you guys have messaged me or on TikTok or on Instagram. If you haven't, feel free to do so. Uh, let me know who your favorite artist is or the first, um, not the first, sorry, or the uh, person that you admire the most that is, you know, kind of internationally known so that we can try to connect with them. I want to wish you guys all the very best and stay tuned for more videos. I'll see you guys soon. Till then. Bye.